What's up, guys? J. Mark Schwartz and Truber here with John Burns of Burns Reviews. That's right. How's it going, man? I'm good, man. I'm pretty good. How you doing? I'm doing good. Today, we're going to be talking about best film of the whole year, probably, right? Obviously. Yeah. Enola Holmes. Best uh, Millie Bobby Brown movie of the year. Best. I, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, this is a spoiler talk, so we're going to be spoiling the heck out of the movie. Um, if you're a nine-year-old that also watched, you know, our devil all the time video, you kind of know what to expect at this point, but we're just going to be giving our thoughts, talking about it, having a nice conversation about this, uh, really wholesome Netflix film. So I mean, they're I like, pretty much the same movie, right? I mean, the, the overlap and the audience, I imagine you can like tell, the same yeah. exact people. Netflix puts out all the same stuff. So for sure, <laughs> it's all the same. Uh, but, uh, so Enola Holmes, you might be wondering, Hey, what is this movie about? What is it? Um, it's a 2020 American mystery film based on the first book in the series of the same name by Nancy Springer. The film, which centers upon the teenage sister of an already famous Sherlock Holmes, is directed by Harry Bradbeer with, from a screenplay by Jack Thorne. Millie Bobby Brown stars, as you already mentioned, uh, and Henry Cavill, Sam Claflin, uh, Helena Bonham Sherlock. Carter's in this. That's right, the Sherlock. A uh, bunch of great people in this movie. So. Let's just start uh, going into this movie. Was this a movie you were anticipating? Was this a movie you were like counting down the days to see? John, tell me, tell me what you were thinking going into this movie. Why did you nah. select this? <laughs> no, nah, I was not. It was like, well, Netflix does this thing where they basically tell you about a week before it comes out, which is smart because yeah. you don't want to be told like six months later. Is this like the coming soon part in the... Is that what you're talking about, or what? What? what part yeah, like when okay. Netflix like kind of tells you like they're putting a movie out. It usually yes. comes out two weeks later. Okay, yeah. So I heard about it and go went. That looks interesting. Yeah. I mean, I like Millie Bobby Brown. I don't know. Do you watch Stranger Things? Are yeah, we we like Stranger. Yeah, we like Stranger Things. We're okay. caught up. Yeah. Um, I I like her. I saw mm -hmm. that Godzilla movie. It wasn't very good. Did you see King of the Monsters? I haven't. No. Was she it's Was she okay in it? she was but the movie is ass so. <laughs> okay <laughs> okay but you can't blame her yeah yeah but, uh, i guess the trailer kind of sold me because like, she's kind of charming in it so is henry cavill yeah and, uh, this looks delightful you know yeah. that's just, and that, that, that's probably what i would sum this movie up as like oh it's just it's just a little treat yeah it's absolutely. a little rock we're going on an adventure um i, I keep thinking of the the gif of uh i'm going on an adventure with like the yeah. hobbit running down the yeah. hill yeah yeah um, i can see that yeah and uh it delivers on that i okay. I, I like I, I remember thinking the score was actually pretty good of this i i also thought that as well yeah i noticed it when it was coming through the movie yeah absolutely especially in the beginning when she's on the bike and i guess she's dead pulling in it and she's talking about she's talking to the camera it's like very they're breaking that fourth wall yeah and uh, i don't know like the adventure like she's going and they're like ramping up the music and i'm like oh i yeah. can't wait i would say <laughs> it starts great the, the only thing that's kind of bad is like the i wouldn't even say it's bad it's just like weak sauce man like the ending's a little weak they explain and it and you're like uh, all right. i i'm def i'm glad you mentioned the ending because like I'm definitely going to want to unpack that a little bit more because I, yeah, I also, we had some strong feelings about the ending as well. How, so how do you want to unpack this? How do you want to go? So I, I was just going to say, like, I don't really have much in the way of expectations. I mean, I knew it was coming out. I remember thinking, oh, this is a cool idea, you know, for a movie. Um, really like Millie Bobby Brown as well. Really liked her in Stranger Things. She seems like she's pretty versatile, you know, a bunch of different things. Um, Trying to think what else i like henry cavill um i watched this movie which could not be more different than nola holmes i watched this movie called the nightingale with uh sam claflin okay yeah i'll we'll, i'll tell you more about it later but after you watch that movie you will not be able to see him as anything else but just the worst person in the whole world i mean he henry plays cavill? a villain no say uh, sam claflin he played uh mycroft yeah okay yeah yeah so anyways but he, i thought i liked him in this movie um but yeah so i thought it had a great looking cast um i remember from the trailer like not really knowing what to think of the whole like fourth wall breaking but i'm like oh you know it seems interesting i was not planning to really watch it but it's funny i got a text from my mom asking me have you seen enola holmes and then like an hour later i got a text from you <laughs> saying have you seen enola holmes so <laughs> i'm like well maybe i'm gonna be watching enola holmes this weekend so if, if i'm if i'm thinking back and if i'm being honest i think two weeks ago when they put the first trailer out and maybe it was longer than that i remember sure. thinking yeah this could be awful 
Or uh-huh. it could be fine. It could sure. be okay. And then I think maybe two days before it came out, the Rotten Tomatoes started to come out a little bit yeah. and started looking pretty good. And then, like, as far as, like, movies of the week, there's not a lot going on. So yeah. let's give it a try. And I was pleasantly surprised. Do you know what I mean? That's probably yeah. how it went down. Yeah, I think I'd say the same, pleasantly surprised. The, um, I think what, the little, like, reading I was doing, apparently it was supposed to come out in theaters, I guess, was the plan sometime this year. But I guess, um, yeah, Netflix scooped it up. So... I mean, it was, they, it was clear they put a lot of money and, you know, time into it. It was, it was an all-star cast, I felt like. Do you so. think it would have done as well in theaters? Do you think it would have been a flop or do you think it would have done okay? I, I feel like Netflix is probably the way to go. I, I don't really, I don't see the turnout for the movie being like super great. But I think as a movie come just released on Netflix, it seems like it got a lot of, a lot of buzz. Like a lot of people were talking about it. It seemed like a, quite a, a lot of people liked it um so i think this is a way to go i'm glad i was able to just go on netflix and watch it you know i don't think i probably would have sought it out I, in theaters i never would have known uh it was going to be a the- theatrical just only because netflix doesn't do theatrical and i know henry cavill well, is in the witcher and she's in stranger things yeah so it just so it really feels like a sense. netflix movie from the get-go well oh sure yeah 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 i know i'm with you um so i just thought that was a little interesting piece of trivia what after watching the movie you sat down you watched it um you're not 15 but you watched it so what uh like what were one or two positive like what, what were some positives uh things that really jumped out to you i know you mentioned the score you know you could obviously unpack that more if you want or like what were two of the really highest points of the movie for you i think this movie relies heavily on millie bobby brown being the charming actress that she is because it reminded me of I think there was a movie called Ever After with uh, Drew Barrymore years ago. Like, this movie has been done. Not Sherlock Holmes or Enola Holmes. But they've done this arc of, we're going to take, like, a 15-year-old girl. Yeah. And we're going to put her in this little adventure thing. Okay. Like, I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I can't think of an example. <laughs> did you watch that, like, like, of your own accord? Or did you watch that with your girlfriend? Like, did she make you watch Ever After? Oh, this is, like, forever ago. This oh. came out, like, nine- <laughs> This came out like in 96. Nobody knows what I'm talking about right now. I'm just saying like, <laughs> like when you think of like actresses that came before Millie Bobby Brown, that kind of felt like that. I don't know why Drew Barrymore comes to mind. It's the only way I can think of. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. But when I, but she has a certain uh, thing about her where she can actually, it doesn't feel like she's just reading in lines and it doesn't pull you out of the movie. I was engrossed because I, I believed that she believed it. So I was kind of long for the ride. Millie. Uh, so I saying, feel like if, yeah. if you put like a crappy children's stars are known to be awful. Yeah. That's, that's a fact. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. if you put the wrong actress in the movie, the whole thing would have fell apart. Oh, absolutely. Uh, even growing up, I never really watched um, any of those like the sorcerer stone kind of what have you these like these ya turn to movies um yeah like what, yeah you like, bring like it up the, every video the, i know you don't like harry <laughs> potter i get it okay well you know what's funny is that when i was watching the end of this <laughs> i remember thinking that the harry potter i watched, i vividly remember watching it when i was a kid Okay. Like, those movies are old. Yeah, yeah. And it was meant. It was probably meant for my generation or our sure. generation. Yeah, and yeah. I remember watching the first one, going, "It was all right." I mean, it just it, it it's fine. But this one, I was like amped. I'm like, "When's the next one coming out?" Okay. I don't know yeah. why. It was like I like the characters. Wait, enough. you're saying you're waiting for Anola Holmes too? I'm saying that I would watch it if it was available. I was engrossed, okay. and they left me in a point that if you told me that this was a franchise. Okay. You know, if you showed me, like, if I was, like, an executive in Hollywood or some okay. crap like that. Okay, And yeah. they, they showed me two movies. And it was, like, the first Harry Potter and the first this one. And they were like, which one do you want a green light? Easily, I would go Noah Holmes. So, just to tag to that, um, I, I would not watch Enola Holmes 2, but I would watch the Holmes team up. You know what I mean? More of, like, an Avengers scenario of Enola and Sherlock and maybe Mycroft. I don't know, but like more of a broad, like not just another Enola centric movie. Again, that, that's just like a, like a tag to it. So I would watch more. I would watch another story in this universe for sure. So like go, kind of going okay. along with that. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, and you were saying, and I don't, and, and this might piss people off, but whatever. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I, I think if they do a sequel, yeah, my, my theory is like, they kind of have like that feministic vibe to it and they kind of do it just enough 
without it overshadowing the entire movie. Okay. But I feel like if they do like the sequel, because every sequel has to be bigger and faster and more extreme and more like typically you have a good thing and then the suits come in and they say, no, you need to do this now. And that's why sequels tend to kind of suck. I don't want them to like push that envelope so hard that we've got completely sidetracked from like the mystery, the characters, the whatever. Yeah. Because like I I thought they did a really good job of, because to me, the way that you, I don't mean to get too political about it, but the way that you invoke like a change politically, socially, in any which way, if you want to do it through a medium, it's a good vessel to do it. But what you do is that you make the audience engrossed in the character. And then you yeah. mention that this is their beliefs. Sure, yeah, you yeah. slap them across the face with like, <laughs> this movie is about this. Yeah. And then they pat themselves on the back and like the acting is like subpar. Then it's like, ugh. It's like, I don't know. Like, it, they're, yeah. they're, you know what I'm talking about. There's definitely 100%. those movies. 100%. That like, they're not even, there's no substance to them. Yeah. You know, so I always kind of tell people, like it kind of reminds me of like The Walking Dead. Like, you come for A, you stay for B. Walking Dead, you come for the zombies, but yeah. you stay for like the story between like Rick and his son. Yeah, you probably yeah. wouldn't just show up for that otherwise. Yeah. So like that's kind of how you need to do things in like a nice way. You need to kind of fool people and give them what they want and then kind of transition it. But like, yeah, I didn't I mind in this movie. This movie I thought was like perfect. They weren't like, fuck you, Henry Cavill. <laughs> okay (laughs) (laughs) like it was like they had that one scene where the lady's like in the shop and she's like she's like the kung fu lady yeah yeah he goes there and like she's kind of like he's like eh, you know and then and she starts to like preach at him a little bit and it's fine i thought it was like well written it was well delivered and i was like Mm -hmm. i agree you know like Mm -hmm. i'm all for it but it it wasn't heavy-handed in like a cheaper movie or tv show that i have seen so much of in the last two years Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. And I thought the I thought the story was I agree with that mostly. But mostly. we'll get we'll get into more of that. Yeah. No, jump but, jump on it, man. Jump on it. We'll, jump we'll, on it right now. Yeah, go for it. Um so I think okay, so this is kind of getting into like like kind of just kind of mad. Not really bad. I didn't think it was like a bad thing, but I felt like what's the best what is the best way to describe this? I don't want to use the word preachy, even though the, the scene in the shop in particular, I felt it was like a tad preachy. I'll say tad. Like it didn't really, it's like, whatever. Like I, I think the movie, I really liked that it was a family film that had kind of a message that had some meat, some substance to it. I like that. Right. Um, I, I think what kind of like got on my nerves a tad, there you go. All the haters out there, just a tad uh, was, was like, that scene I felt like was a little preachy, but then also the obvious like role reversals where it was just like so obvious after a while that you're like, okay, I get it. Like, okay, normally a guy would be doing this. Oh, it's a girl now in this movie. Like it, it happened so many times that I felt like it, 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 it didn't really annoy me. It was just like a little distracting. It's like, I see what you're doing and like you're doing it so frequently that I see what you're doing. So I just felt like if they could have been maybe a little less obvious or just kind of like mix it up a little bit, you know what I mean? Like she doesn't have to do everything to be the hero of the movie. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I felt like, uh, I'm trying to think, I feel like even like Mad Max Fury Road was pretty great. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Furiosa obviously might've done a little bit more than, Ma- than Max, but Max still like, you know, kicked butt. Um, so which is know. which is coming out on 4K Steelbook this Tuesday, and I will be doing a video to be there. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Give away. Plug. <laughs> yeah. Plug. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're like, I'm keeping this one for myself. <laughs> um, um, so, so but yeah, yeah, so but yeah, I know I see what you're saying. Yeah. So you felt like some of the scenes were a little too heavy-handed. <sighs> I guess. Or you, or or you, or you, you said you, you didn't believe that all the char- like certain characters, would be those characters. I don't know if it's not believing it's just you know oh i'm you know i'm one-upping my you know male brother oh this this other you know this my fr- friend that's a boy is useless it just was like very clearly like feminist and it's like listen i like other movies that are like feminist type movies that you know I, I can still enjoy it if it's a good story i just like if i i think that held it back from being like a perfect family movie that's all i'm saying i think overall it was still a good family movie i think everything really was above average i mean 
the acting I felt was, like was great. You know, I felt like the story was engaging enough. Um, the opening in particular, if you kind of touched on, was like really like the pacing was just like, it was like, okay, I'm sucked in here. Yeah. Um, Millie was See, really charming. I don't, so. I, don't um, I only want to put like one little, little cap on this and then we'll move on because I don't want to get into this too much. Sure. Um, out of fear of like someone might like destroy me. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I would, I would say that I like, I, I didn't mind it really. It was fine. Like yeah. I never mind a movie that like kind of says like, look, women can do stuff. All right. So like back off. Yeah. That's fine. You can put as much as that in a movie and make it for like young girls. Fine. Yeah. This yeah. is where I get pissed off. And they're like, and the men are the reason why. <laughs> yeah, and we yeah. have to never trust them. And <laughs> them. Don't yeah. turn your back on them. I'm like, you lost me. You had me. You lost me. Because when you were all about equality, I was like, all right, yeah. 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 And then they're yeah. like, and fuck men. And I'm like, yeah. well, how am I supposed to back you now? Right. Like, how am I, I to put like, down the other gender to make the other, you know, it's like, well, no, maybe they're just equal. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And that's that's all I gotta really say. But like I didn't mind it. Like they didn't. And they didn't do that. They didn't do that. They were like, you know, I think I, I think Henry Cavill kind of gets told like, well, you know, this is a world that that suits you. Yeah. And he's like, all right. And then they kind of move on. It wasn't bad though. I've seen far worse. And like typically, that's where you pull the thread and you start looking at the rest of the movie and you're like, bad visual effects, bad mm -hmm. acting, bad directing. Like this is just a a okay. cut and paste studio film of like. Yeah, nope. No real effort or heart was put into this. Right. We should right. we should edit all this out because people are gonna be like, <laughs> "Well, you know what I think, John and J Mark." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're gonna be lit up on the blog blog. Yeah, because because you, know? you can't. This is the internet. You can't have an opinion, and also you can never change your opinion. Right. So um, you yeah. have to be right from the age of four, and then just kind of stick to it and help. Absolutely. Your yeah. Choose wisely. <laughs> I'll say this. Every, I, some positives. Every single scene in the movie where a, mo a woman's in the kitchen, I definitely w appreciated. <laughs> I was like, though, I was clapping. Asia was telling me to shut up. Um, so that's the, if, every, if anybody wants a sound bite, there's the sound bite. Are there, are there a lot of those scenes? <laughs> I feel like really the preachy scene was the scene where she was in the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> she was uh, yelling at Henry Cavill. <laughs> a little ironic don't you think but well i mean okay so just just to be i'm kidding uh, i don't think women I'll, can I'll, do I'll, things men can do john i mean that's what i'm saying i'll, I'll plead ignorance here because maybe i just don't know better but what i don't I, I don't know what year this is this movie but you have the one character the character that's teach that with the teapot that's talking yeah, yeah. to henry cavill Teaching she him. runs like a, a jiu-jitsu uh, uh thing in her attic yeah. In yeah. England. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. Hold on, I mean, John. I'm going to have to – let me get my history book. Hold John, on. John, hold on. John, hold on. I need, before, you get your, before you get your gavel out and you start judging this movie, what is that? Uh, this is my history book of England. I'm just, I just want to make sure that – no, I don't see that. <laughs> I could be wrong. Whenever they, whenever they, like, change history, you're kind of like that dog that uh, tweaks its head goes, huh? You know, it's like <laughs> somebody did say, if you think that they, uh, men and women did not learn jujitsu back then, you are dead wrong. That's actually what a uh, direct quote from somebody. So your point is invalidated, John. All right, let's move on because I feel like we're going down <laughs> a whole different topic. <laughs> no, here's the thing: I don't, I don't disagree with you. I said the same thing when I was watching it, but Asia pointed out she's like, no, like it was probably fringe, but like she's like, I could see that being a thing. One thing she pointed out historically accurately, uh, you know, trying to be historically accurate, she pointed out the fact um, that her hair was down. And I was like, what do you mean her hair's down? And she's like, no, like th back then, if their hair was down like that in public, seriously, they were looked at as like a slut or like somebody who got around. That's actually what they were like. And so the fact that like nobody made a comment like, hey, you know, even just like a passive comment like, hey, like, why was your hair like that? If you look in the background, no other woman's hair or girl's hair is like that. She's the only one wearing her hair down like that. And so that took me out of the movie a little bit as well. And that is why I'm not giving it a 10 on the top. <laughs> what did you think, John? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of just like left my, I don't want to say just left my brain at the door, but kind of. Like, I kind of, I, I just want the idea of like, this is like a whimsical other world reality it's an adventure movie just go with it and then don't overly think it you know what you know? 
last thing I'll say to all the feminists out there that are watching this. No, last thing I'll say is, um, so <laughs> John's like, what did I sign up for? <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm John. And today we're talking about Nola Holmes. Today we have J-Mark and uh, we're going to start opening it up right now. Hey, Mark, what did you think of Nola Holmes? <laughs> Millie. Mill Millie Millie, I think, carries the whole movie on her back. I yeah. think Henry Cavill does a great job. Um, I don't buy him as Superman. I'm sorry. I buy him as Superman. I don't entirely buy him as like a Sherlock. Well that's because okay. I've seen like every incarnation of Sherlock. I've seen um Robert Danny Jr., I've seen Benedict Cumberbatch. Are you a big fan of Sherlock or like would you cons consider yourself like a, a, a fan? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I've seen some like the older movies from like the 1930s. Yeah. I've seen my like every incarnation of Sherlock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but considering it's not his movie, yeah, I was I was cool with like him just being, you know, he's there, he's charming, he doesn't do too much. Um, yeah. And it's fine. Uh, I thought Mycroft was a dick way too many times. He okay. could not stop being a dick. It was like he had a little counter in his pocket and he was like, I need to get to 100 today. <laughs> and he's just like... My dick counter. <laughs> yeah. My d <laughs> Maybe not the best name for it. Uh, we'll come up right? with a better name. But, um, but yeah, it just... And I, I understand that he was trying to like, okay, this is the shithead brother. And he's always been that way in the other versions. Have you seen the, the other version? Like, have you watched the show Sherlock or... Um, I've seen the first two... What, is there three seasons or four seasons? Like, three seasons and a movie, I, I think. think. I think they're... Uh, well, it's weird because, like, it's from Britain. So, like, they don't do seasons. They do, like, volumes. Series. I, th yeah. I think I've seen the first two seasons and really liked it, liked it a lot. And then I watched the Robert Downey Jr. movies and, and liked those. I'd say I really liked this kind of different, um, seeing a different side of the character of Sherlock Holmes. I really liked that. I think it was a little, again, this was just kind of a, <laughs> again, I did not hate this movie. This was just kind of like a little bit of like a, mm, like it would have been nice to have seen him maybe saw the case or something like not a full case but, but jay mark it's not action. his movie what well, not I know his movie i know it's not his movie but it's like you're gonna have superman in the movie and then he's just like talking to his sister i mean come on like show like a snippet of something you know what i mean like give me a little this something. is not this is not your sherlock movie made for you jay mark it's like the incredible hulk but you just see bruce banner for like 10 minutes i mean it's like come on just show me a little incredible hawk <laughs> But I did, okay, but I thought Henry Cavill was really sweet. Asia said her favorite part, um, a little shout out to Asia Schwarzenegger. Uh, she said her favorite part was um, the relationship with, with Sherlock. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Sherlock and Enola. She really liked their relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to do, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. <laughs> I like, I, I seriously like the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> um i thought it was charming like i, I like yeah. how they kind of um they kind of drag it out a little bit like they don't just hit the, the ground running with like yeah my croft she's great like yeah yeah it's kind of earned they kind of transition it and, yeah and it's a really a little bit yeah they're, leave, they're leaving room for all the sequels they're gonna probably do yeah which is fine i'm gonna watch them and as i burn my harry potter dvds <laughs> We're going to have to have another conversation off camera because this is not going on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you like – I will say I liked Mycroft. Again, Sam Claflin, uh, if I'm saying his name right, uh, is an incredible actor. I thought he did a great job of being a dick. I haven't like, seen he, him in anything. Little, oh, what, is, what is he in? So he was um, – so what was he in? So he was in uh, the, that like fourth Pirates of the Caribbean movie with the mermaids. Do you remember that? Does anybody? No, okay. <laughs> mermaid scene was pretty great. I like that. But he was like a missionary that falls in love with a mermaid. So he's in that. And then he's... Okay. Uh, Asia just messaged me. I'm all about that incest. I think she means about Sherlock and Enola. That's not what I was saying, by the way. Uh, anyways, uh, Sam Claflin, he, he was also in... Um, he was in... Uh, did you watch the Hunger Games movies? Yes. Okay. He was... Uh, what was his name? Finnick O'Dare was in the second movie Catching Fire. Remember he was that like super buff guy that actually was really nice and he like saved that old lady. Remember he was like partnered up with like an old lady. Oh, so he was like a player. Yeah, he was a player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a player. Um, but yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a great actor. I really liked him in this, but I just felt like the character was really one dimensional. 
and so again, well, that's that was what just I'm saying. Like he was just yeah. there to be a dick. Yeah, and I was just like, okay, again, I like the movie. I thought he did a good job, but it's just like, man, like they could have done a little bit more with his character. They gave right. so much to Sherlock. I I really want to get into like the narrative of the story because I have a couple <laughs> points that stick to me that I just can't make up like heads or tails of. I want yes, to talk about uh, Helena Bohemian Carter's character, the mother. Yes. Because there's so much, I feel like, doesn't really work for me. Like I like the character. Like I'm I'm cool with like okay, she was homeschooled. They're playing tennis in the house, fucking shit up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I I I didn't mind the flashbacks. Like um, I kind of enjoyed the flashbacks when, whenever Anola was in a bind, she would kind of flash back to her childhood. Yeah. And her mother would say something, and then so that all works for me. Yeah, that was cool. What doesn't work for me is the very very end when she finds her in the apartment and. Yes. Now I find myself going. Where were you? <laughs> Why did Sherlock never find you? Yeah. Why didn't you come forward sooner? Yeah. How were you tied to the vote? Because did were you gonna vote? Or and then I'm like, well, she had the dynamite, so I'm like, was she gonna blow up Parliament if it didn't go her way? Like, I have a lot of questions that just never get answered. And when she showed up, I was like, great payoff. Because yes. we take a we take a hard left to go follow the the boy. Yeah, and, and that whole thing. Yeah, and we'll yeah. get to that next. But right. like, when we circle back, I don't, I don't, I'm lost. I'm still lost. So the way that we, the wife and I read it was um, that it seemed like she. It's kind of not ever really touched on again, but it seemed like she was. It was almost a. I mean, again, they had a good mission. It seemed like, but it almost was like a terrorist organization. I mean, they were going to bomb the place. And that's well, kind of what they imply, but then they okay. never go back to it. Because I guess like, she was, she was probably danger. she was probably pro reform. And yeah. I guess if they didn't get the vote passed, they were gonna blow it up. That's what I the what I the sense I got. I, and I so guess I in the comments if if like we're way off, but that's but then she she doesn't she just say, "I left because you were in danger. This was to protect you." It's like why? Because you were gonna blow something up and like they were gonna come for our family. And that's what I'm saying. Like they have that scene where she's. Anola walks in on her and like five other people and they got like maps and plans. Yeah. You didn't need her to actually be there. You could have had somebody else do it. Maybe somebody who didn't have a kid. Sure. Or three kids. Sure. Oh, I want to bring that up too. I don't know if I buy that Helena Bohemian Carter is the mother of Henry Cavill. Are you trying to say her name that way? I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Helena Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Hel- think- is it Helen or is it Helena? If you've ever seen a Tim Burton movie, you should know this. Okay. It's Helena Bonham Carter. Okay. Helena Bonham. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Keep saying it the way you're saying it. I love it. It's great. <laughs> you can just say the mom. <laughs> say, say it one more time so I could just like hear it. Helena Bonham, B-O-N. Bonham. Bonham Carter. Okay. Bonham. Bonham. Stupid name. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm like, I know Helena. That's like uh, my uh, chemical romance. I remember that song. <laughs> so, what, so what were you um, going to say? Uh, so my question is, my question is like, um, like why, like she never explains anything. Um, Wait, were you gonna say she didn't think she was old enough to have all three kids i don't i think henry cavill and her are too close in age for it to be a mother and son sure sure like i don't know exactly how old she is i know she got like her big start in like fight club and then she like you said all those tim burton movies <laughs> oh, and those were like in the 2000s and i could buy millie bobby brown because she's like what is she well, 15 right. yeah but, something like that but uh I, oh, henry cavill's gotta be what like 32 34 yeah, but I think Helena Bonham Carter is in her fifties now. So okay, well, I, I so I think it could work, especially if they're getting married at like sixteen and seventeen. You know what I mean? Like true. So that that is a that is something to consider. And they're probably like, hey, we're lucky we got big names for this movie. We're not gonna mess with it too much. It's fine. Don't worry <laughs> about it. I don't know. I so as a as a um. Mother to Anola. El- uh, now I'm going to start saying her name wrong. <laughs> to Anola, I thought she was she was great, really sweet. But 
overall as a character again when it comes to the plot when it comes to the plan and then the ending i was just kind of like wait what i was confused um and then i mean at the very least they could have had like a dance number at the very end you know give me some payoff or something like this come isn't on. like slum dog <laughs> millionaire where we just we're like the ending of greece <laughs> Well, I mean, that would have been better than her just like talking to her mom in a bedroom and her mom saying, well, you know, now you have to be alone. Enola, you know, I, it's like, okay, I don't like I typically put it, like dance I put numbers. put it in your fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't typically like dance numbers in movies, but I think that would have been an improvement on what we got. So, um, again, well, I like the movie. They're setting, they're setting up the sequels because like if it was a standalone movie, yeah. she would have came home. They all would have hugged. It would have been like a thing. Dance sequence. No. Okay. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Why a dance sequence? <laughs> I no, like... no good movie has ever ended on a dance sequence. Maybe because I saw clips of uh, like Despicable Me recently and it's like every movie of the, every one of those movies has to end with a disco song, you know? Oh God. <laughs> Like Zootopia or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Um, so you mentioned the uh, the useless boy. What did you think about him? What was his name? I yeah, I'll give you I'll give you a tongue twister. How about that? What's what was his character's name? <laughs> I was trying to look up his name, and I think on IMDb and Wikipedia they didn't have the full name. I was bummed. He's a mini lord. We can call him that. Little little. Uh, no, we can call him little uh, One Direction. Little. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> do, we, do we even know the actor's name? Does that help? Was he in anything else? I think he was, uh, uh, gosh, what, um, I think he was, Lu was it Lewis Partridge? Yes. Okay. T. Um, oh, God. He looked familiar, but I don't. Tewksbury. Tewks. T. Tewks. Vis Viscount Tewksbury. Tewksbury. Viscount. Oh, uh, he was in Paddington too. I heard that was a good movie. Um, so, um, so Tewksbury, he's on the train. Uh, she's trying to find the mom. Mm -hmm. He's trying to escape murder. Yeah, from a, a generic assassin who I've seen this actor in other stuff. I can't play some. Well, he was in the I've, Dark Knight Rises at least. Uh, I remember he was in that, and then um, he's just uh, he's in like every British thing. So that's right. He's like the assistant to the other guy in the dark Knight rises right he's like the yeah uh, isn't he made to walk out i think he's made to walk out on the ice and then he falls through i think he was that okay guy. Yeah, yeah yeah he's one of those like rich suit dudes that yeah. yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he's a very distinct okay. face which just we since we brought him up a little bit of an aside but this is in the movie but what did you think about that like shockingly violent shot of him falling and hitting the furniture did that, did that stick out to you as, like, kind of weird? <laughs> I never watched it going, that impaled his head. Yeah. And then, because it, that's the sound effect they put in there. Yes. And then he rolls off, and then he starts talking. He's got more to say. <laughs> and I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> like, if that, if that dude said anything, because he'd have brain damage, he'd be like, a duh, scrambled egg, uh, blah, uh. Yeah, yeah. Duh, Helena, Bohemian car. Yeah, no. Um, you know, that's like the old trope of like, you can't have the hero kill anybody. So it's got to happen in a really dumb way. And, it's just uh, that, that one shot was so... Like, I felt like I was watching, I don't know, like an accidental murder or something. You know what I mean? Like, a, yeah. uh, you know, his eyes are open. You know, I was just like, whoa, that just took me by surprise. Again, I, I guess that's why I was rated PG-13 for some violence. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Fine. But anyways, you were talking about him. Has I, I totally, I, I was sitting there and I was like, she, I, he's get, she's getting to the corkscrew. They introduced it. She failed it. Now she's going to do it. I'm calling. It's coming yes. up in 32 boom and it happened so i'm and like all right yeah yeah you call yeah. it it's it's kind of like the dark knight rises again it's like it's it's the third try he gets out of that cave you know what i mean yeah. it's like yeah movies do that it's always like we introduce an idea yeah. they show the character failing and then they they win they do the, the corkscrew first you don't which, succeed. which kind <laughs> of reminded me of like uh like every time you see black widow in any movie and she just does like that scissor kick thing and she's like around the head and down yes you know, You're just gonna um, now. Whenever I watch, it, I'm just gonna be like, "Hey, corkscrew, <laughs> corkscrew." <laughs> um, did you did you uh, did you see the 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 grandma being the bad guy in the end? 
I want to talk about that. I didn't, yeah, pick up on that. You mentioned though the train. Was there anything that stood out to you about that sequence, like the train sequence? I thought it was kind of funny that he was in the bag and he just falls off. Yeah, kind of yeah. a big bag. I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, would he really fit? Like, you would need like a hockey bag. Yeah, or something obscenely big. Right, to, right. To make that work, and then I don't know, and then okay, well, the train is fine. It was kind of. Like, what do you mean? Like, what about it? Well, I mean, you were, well, I guess you, I guess you brought it up because you were just going through the plot. Oh, there wasn't, um, that wasn't like particularly a memorable sequence. Well, that's just where we, that's just where we meet. Um, yeah. Twinkleberry, <laughs> Twinkleberry, Tingleberry. I don't know. Well, Tingleberry. Tingleberry. His name is Tingleberry now. <laughs> Tingleberry. <laughs> Dingleberry. I like it. We're Dingleberry. Stick on that. That's the new. <laughs> it's appropriate and it's close enough. Oh. Uh. Oh, uh, what about the feels, man? I mean, there were some major feels coming from the both of them. I mean, they were like, there was something well, she's, stirring. Well, she's very tuned. Them. She's very tuned into that as an actress. So, like, I think it's just like four seasons of Stranger Things. She could turn on Cry Face like that. My yeah, God. I mean, and, but you know, what? I, I'll give her her credit. Like, she's not bad at it. Yeah. Well, but I guess I just meant the love. Oh, I didn't. Did you feel love? I didn't feel love between the two of them. There was like, there was some major chemistry. Between her and Dingleberry. Uh, Dingleberry? That's great. <laughs> I, can, I can remember that. Yeah. Um, I didn't even mind him too much. He was fine. I mean, like, what do you really expect? I mean, like, we're like, we're older men watching this dumb 15-year-old movie for 15-year-olds. Uh, it's not for us. Let's be real. You know, it's, it's fine. <laughs> I think um, if I was like 15. 13, so, well, no, okay, never mind. That's not helping my case. That doesn't help you. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help me. It's like um, randomly rated R. <laughs> I feel like I've seen worse than him in these kind of movies. Okay, yeah, I thought he did an adequate job. He's I think fine. it was one of his first movies, so. It's, it's whatever. I want to talk about um, Grandma, because, you know, the acting is kind of like whatever. Like, you don't yeah. like to talk about it so much. I want to talk about the storyline yes. as well as we can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, so grandma is the bad guy in the end. Right. Right. And she's done this because she wants to make sure, sure that the vote doesn't happen yeah. and there's no reform and we're stuck in the old ways forever because yes. that helps her. Cause she's, I guess like a one percenter, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And my question is this though. Yeah. Had she have just obtained him and tied him up until after the vote and then let him go. Wouldn't that have worked too? It was like surprisingly dark. You know, I'm just going to take a shotgun out and blow my <laughs> what nephew, right? Because she's the aunt. Her grandson. Grandma. Grandson. Her grandson. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to blow my grandson away. Like... Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little unrealistic, you think? I think so. <laughs> like yeah. a little unnecessary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then what were his fucking credentials? The guy who was trying to like kill them and couldn't kill two children children oh sure well like i guess the guy in the train yeah him, i guess right yeah what, what was he doing was he like a gardener like he ain't no assassin i'll tell you that much he's not an assassin that's for sure um he just, but yeah that that kind of bugged me i was like you could have just like i know they said they tried to send him to like boarding school yeah and i guess he ran away on the train and then they're like well what do we do now kill him obviously yeah yeah Seems like the reasonable. <laughs> I know he's like the last living member of like the the family bloodline, and they're very proud of their family name. So like, let's kill that. Let's kill the bottom. Right. Well, I guess they killed the father too. Maybe right. They don't really say. Well, and then it's there was implied. A, it's point, implied. But I guess the uncle was away at war. Is that what they said? Well, they did this thing where there was all I remember is that they did this, they they mentioned who's to gain because they asked him like, well, who would who would you vote for? And he's yeah. like, oh, like my father, I would have voted for it. Okay, so like, oh, and I think the, the most to gain by they met, they name the uncle, and then we find that so we like the grandmother and whatnot. And, okay, he was away at but, war, uh, so he like had her like they plotted, I guess, and right. then she she hired the weird looking guy to go after him. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah. I mean, do you think it it was like two two hours and. It's been over two hours and three and three minutes. Man, you did your research. Uh, what? I, I feel like most family movies are like ninety. Do you feel like it had to be two hours? I feel like it maybe could have been a little shorter. Um, you know, considering we're living in a pandemic when all we want is fresh content, <laughs> and and, and it was a, judge, and it was streaming for yeah. like, 
more or less free on Netflix. Yeah. And it's a movie that needs a little bit of world building because it's not our reality. It's it's yeah. it's there. So it's okay. I'll allow yeah. it. I, I do think it's become more of a thing. Yeah. Um interesting point though, because I think people have made that point of movies that were originally going to be in theaters that are later instead put on streaming more deleted scenes have been left in really well when you're a movie theater you want to show the movie as many times as possible so you could show a movie eight times instead of seven times if it's a little bit shorter okay but if you're putting on streaming you the idea is to keep people on that platform as long as possible so the mindset has changed a little bit okay like i think bill and ted they talked about this like bill and ted was supposed to be shorter maybe but because it ended up being a, a, a pay-per-view type of deal. Pandemic movie. On demand. Yeah, yeah. pandemic <laughs> on demand. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it was, it was okay. I guess there was, like, a couple moments in the middle that kind of were like, what are we doing, guys? What are we sure, doing? yeah, maybe, like, could have it up a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying. So, what else? I mean, my, my, mom was a, terror, a terrorist, question mark. I have that written down. <laughs> Yeah, but she was like, you know, an empowered one that was a secretly yeah. an anti-hero. Yeah, an anti-hero, I guess. Who didn't but who didn't even do anything. It's like it's like you could take her out of the movie and you know, nothing really changes other than the fact that it's the motivator for her to go out into the world and do this. Right. But she doesn't change the events of anything. Like she could have died or i don't know i mean she was trying to find her throughout the whole movie i guess so maybe i don't know i still don't know what the fuck she was doing this whole time (laughs) she could have been she could have been upstairs in her little like place in london just chilling yeah i don't i thought the mom like leaving her daughter on her own was like what are you doing here exactly like why are you that's the thing i didn't mind the setup i disliked the payoff okay like that's fine that they did that but then like, give us a reasonable explanation as, like, what's going on. You could have even, even made that the setup for the next movie if you wanted to. Are you saying you're okay with – well, what I'm saying is at the end of the movie, she still left her alone. Like, are you okay with that? That with her leave, yeah. abandoning her child? Well, well yeah, because we got to keep the door open for the sequels, obviously. <laughs> Everybody left her alone. They're like, well, it's her name, you know, so – that was a little strange. Yeah, like her brothers just left. I mean, I guess you don't have Zoom to talk and correspond with each other. Keep They're up too with important, each other. J. Mark. They're too important. <laughs> We're He's really the world's busy. greatest detective, and and Mycroft is a is a dapper gentleman of of society, and they can't be bothered. They, I felt like they could have, they definitely could have dug into that a little bit more. Like you a bit, maybe feelings of like abandonment or no time. You know, I <laughs> we got a mystery a, to solve. All right. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like that would have been a realistic. Uh, I feel like that was something that they kind of just glossed over. You know, I don't know. Was that just me? Well, they want they want their cake and they want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to say to the audience, "Yeah, this is a descendant or an offshoot of Sherlock Holmes, the great detective." Yeah. But they also want to have the element of she's on her own doing it by herself. She so that's, doesn't rely so, on her brother or. Yeah, which yeah. which for the sake of the story, like I get why they combine those things and kind of just you know. Yeah. Look, man, I'm not. This is not the next like uh, Marvel movie where I'm gonna try to like decipher it. This is not the fucking uh, <laughs> the, the great detective movie. Like it's 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 a Nola fucking Holmes. You know what I mean? I mean, have you read any of the books? Obviously, haven't <laughs> you? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this was a whole series, 2006 to 2010. So I totally I, missed out. I've got the stack on my nightstand. Do you? <laughs> Next to um, English history about jujitsu, I'm sure they're fine, man. I'm sure they're like uh, like modern day goosebumps or some shit like that. Yeah, right? yeah, like Hardy, well, the Hardy Boys or something. Nancy yeah. Drew, Nancy Drew. That oh. I did get, I did get that vibe, but I thought it was a little bit cooler than Nancy Drew. Okay, sure. Yeah, I don't know Bobby anything Brown. about Nancy Drew. I I remember like the cover of some of the books when I was a kid going to the library. Maybe they're great. I think wasn't there a movie like a year or two ago and it just bombed and it came and went. I Wasn't like it? Was it Emma Roberts? Maybe I think it was like a Nickelodeon. Maybe Nickelodeon movie. I can't even say that Nickelodeon. word. Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. <laughs> like Helena Bohemian Carter. So I. I liked I, Nola Holmes, man. She. Was, I did too. I really did. She's got spunk. Yes. She's got. Uh, yeah. I feel like there was there were some things to make fun of. She's got some great. like. Yes. 
like there were some like i said like i said there was definitely some nitpicks that were like fun to point out but no i i'm glad i watched it i'm more impressed with millie bobby brown now i want to see her in something else i saw i saw several comments on the trailer for the movie on youtube when it came out people were saying well in this two minute trailer she already said more than every all the four seasons of stranger things so (laughs) <laughs> well, that's the character, you know what I mean? Well, no, like, I know. It's, it's just it was, it was just really funny. It's like, wow, no, that's a really good point. I would have been depressed if the whole movie was just her, like, being, like, 11. Just being, like, friends don't lie, Sherlock. <laughs> Although she could have used her, like, telepathy powers to throw the guy off of the train. I mean, that would have been kind of cool. That would have been cool. <laughs> that would have been cool. I didn't quite follow the bit where she was, like, uh, do you trust me? We're going to jump at this exact moment. And I guess she was like working out of her head. The turn would be the slowest point or something like that. I don't you know. Shot, yeah, that was a really cool. I was point. like, movie is just moving in. <laughs> <laughs> As it does. <laughs> so what So what would you give it? Um, I mean, how many, I'm trying to think, how many corkscrews out of 10 would you give them? Ah. <laughs> um, I think I would give it like three out of five. I thought it was good. I don't think it was like <laughs> three very, corkscrews out of five. Three out of five corkscrews. I thought it was a good movie. I would recommend it. Okay. I don't think it was like world shattering. I don't think it's like a masterpiece in any way, but I don't think it aims to be either. It's not like it, I think it hits its mark. Okay. I think it, 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 it knows what it wants to be. It lands on it. It's fine. Mm-hmm. It's okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've watched a lot of bad movies and bad TV shows. I can't say this was like awful. Like, I enjoyed it. Like, would I, like, watch it once a week? Fuck no. But, like, <laughs> it was fine. It was a movie. I, I'm going to drop a bomb on you. I'm going to go three and a half corkscrews out of five. Oh, Ooh, yes. waka waka. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I take it back. I gave it a three out of five on my, on my letterbox. Oh, that's a three and a half, right? It is. Okay, so yeah. Okay. So we're actually matched up. Great minds think alike. See, I, well, see, because I can't think straight when I'm actually. I'll, I wrote delightful. I feel like when they make like kids movies that are made for like a certain age bracket, like like 15 year olds, I guess. Yeah. They just seem very much like they're talking down to them. Yeah. Or they try to be like awkwardly like cutting edge and witty. Like they try to do like a PG version of like Rick and Morty, and you're like, what is going on? Do you know what I mean? It's like they try to <laughs> put in like some jokes, like uh. That are just I don't know. This just felt like a like a, a delightful little romp. It was very yeah. It was really you good. Know, time. It was fine. I don't know. Yeah, we we're living in 2020. It was okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was like kind of forgettable, but it, for, a little bit of escapism. Family, it's though, okay. I think, it was, I think it was definitely was one of the better family films I've seen recently. I, mean, I don't I don't think it's um I don't think it's one of those kids movies that like when the parents are sitting there watching it with them going, oh Jesus Christ, like. Like right. I think I think everybody can enjoy it on a certain level. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's it's digestible. It's not and it's actually kind of good. I don't know. I liked it. Yeah. I stick with that. I liked it too. I stick I with like my three it. and a half. It's very good. Yes. Millie Bobby Brown. <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown for the win. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. I don't think karate professionals should watch it. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? It might be offensive to the karate community. Yeah. And they anyone like the, this is historically inaccurate. Yeah. I don't really know if this is for me. Karate professionals, anyone with the last name Dingleberry, don't watch it. I just, oh no, the Dingleberries should definitely watch it. <laughs> this should be like this is our movie. Yeah. Like this is the closest we're ever gonna get to being having our name in the movie. I'm like royalty. I'm Lord the proud Dingleberry name. Lord Dingleberry. <laughs> Lord Dingleberry from Bridgewood. Bridgeport, Maine. I don't fucking know. It was some bullshit name. Oh my gosh! I it's... think I I think I enjoyed it, and you were like, oh, "Why? Why did he pick this movie?" <laughs> I will admit, everybody, I was the one who picked this movie. So, <laughs> in case that wasn't obvious, thank you so much for joining me, uh, Mr. Burns, John Burns. Definitely go check out uh, Burns Reviews. I'm gonna have the link down in the description. Uh, does ending explained videos, Blu-ray trips. Um, he goes and, and picks up the newest steel books that are out, like Mad side Max Fury side Road. Side by some, side videos. Some Batman reviews. Seven, some Dune. Yes, movie Boys, reviews. He's giving away, uh, giving away that Rick and Morty season four digital copy behind me. You can get that on tomorrow. All you got to oh do is subscribe, like, comment. There you go. On J Mark and mine. There you go. 
now. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man. We're here. Uh, all right. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you later.